All right, um, here's the thing. Today we're going to do a tune-up on my three four mixes. And the reason why I have all three here, only one's going to be done on video, is because I want you guys to see that this is the 90, regardless of the numbers. KM, that just means that it's the combi. Um, you can also have an FS, all right, uh, like this. FS100. The FS100 and the 90 is the same motor. Okay, um, maybe a different carburetor, maybe a different piston, I don't know. But they're, it's all interchangeable parts. And then you have the HL, which is the hedge trimmer. The HL100K is going to be the same. So like when you, if you go to your steel dealer and you say, I need a spark plug for my, oh crap, I don't remember what I have. It could be a 90, it could be the 100, and I believe the 110. They all come from the same family. So you can get spark plugs right here. They're all the same spark plug. Fuel filter, they're all the same fuel filter. Air cleaner, they're all the same air cleaner. And valve cover gaskets, they're all the same valve cover gaskets. And they use the same size uh, feeler gauge for your valve covers, or for your valves. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to show you guys how to disassemble the 90. Yeah, the 90 would be an easy one to work on. We're going to disassemble the 90. Um, this one I think still has the, uh, yeah, this one still has the spark arrestor in it. We're going to get this spark arrestor out of here. Uh, but you know what? Let's do, let's, well, that one's kind of hard to work on because of the hedge trimmer. It's hard. It's going to be hard for video. Uh, but we'll go ahead and I guess we'll disassemble the 90. We're going to change the fuel filter. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. You need like a hook or something so you can get into the fuel tank. I'll show you that. Um, we're going to change the spark plug. It's easy to use the tool that comes with it. This steel gives you a tool with the T22, I think, uh, bit on the end that fits these, these fancy uh, bolts. You see that like star bolt back there? This tool fits that. Um, among other things, it'll also fit your combi right here, probably, yep, your handle, so if you need to adjust your handle. So when you get your steel weed eater and it comes with this, save this, all right? This, this will fit your spark plug and like all the different bolts and stuff. So you need this. Um, to do the valves, you need the feeler gauge, which is four thousandths, um, a, ten, uh, a uh, 5 16 wrench or 8 millimeter. You need a little hook thingy for your fuel. You need some grease for the head. A little throttle body cleaner so when you take off the valve, the air cleaner cover here, you can spray your carburetor down a little bit. Um, that's really it. Plugs, filter, fuel filter, air filter, gasket, adjust the valve. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to change the spark plug, change the air filter, change the fuel filter, take the valve cover off, adjust the valves back into spec. I'll show you guys how to do that. We'll put it all back together. We'll fire this bad boy up and that is $15 a machine. Okay, that's all it's going to cost you to get the parts. I spent about $45, $46 bucks or something like that on doing all three. I went to Andy's Lawn Machinery right up the street here in Garden City on Highway 17 and I said I need to do a tune-up I need filters I need to, to get the valve gasket and the thing is you could buy this as a kit from steel and you can ask them to stock it they can order you the kit if they put this in a bag it's more money than if you ask for a valve cover gasket and the tool the the shim the little feeler gauge. You don't need this feeler gauge. If you have feeler gauges, just use the four thousandths. Okay. So this is the steel feeler gauge, but you don't need this. So you could just get these valve cover gaskets cheap. Your steel dealer is going to have them. Um, so don't worry about buying the kit. The kit's going to cost more money. A tune-up kit's going to cost more money than just saying I need. A fuel filter, an air filter, and a spark plug. That's all you need for a tune-up. Really, just your fuel filter, your air filter, and a spark plug is really all you need. Unless you have known issues, then you might need to clean your carburetor. But cleaning your carburetor is cleaning a carburetor. Cleaning a carburetor is not a tune-up. Uh, a tune-up is you're getting everything back to new. Filters, 
valve lash, get all that stuff straight. So the first thing that you want to do is drain your fuel. The reason why you want to drain your fuel is because you're going to be digging around in here, getting, uh, getting that fuel filter out. And when you can do it quick and fast like that, you get any sediment out that might be in your tank. And you know, like little dirt chunks and stuff like that. And you don't want dirt chunks in your tank when you're putting a new fuel filter in. So just go ahead, drain it, all right? If you want, you can even put a little bit more gas in there and do it again, tip it over one more time. It won't hurt. It's, it's not like you're, you're wasting a whole lot of fuel, but it does make a difference. It'll help you in the end. Um, starting with a clean tank. That's number one. Cap back on. We're going to do the fuel filter and all that stuff later. We're going to start with the heavy hurdy dirty stuff because you guys probably want to know about the heavy lifting and the heavy lifting is the valve train. So let's go ahead and get started on that. I'll bring you guys in closer. I won't be in it, but the machine will. Maybe I will be in it. I don't know. Alright, so first thing you want to do, let's get this crap out of our way, is get this crap out of our way. Number one. Uh, number two, go ahead and take your cover off. So like I said, using that tool, you got three bolts to get this cover off. Here's one, and two, and three. Right here. And three's right on this side somewhere. I can't see it. There we go. See how nice it is that they give you this tool? Don't lose this tool, man. Because then you got to go out and you got to buy what's called torque bits. Um, you don't want to do that. They give you this tool. I mean, you know, you pay $400 for a machine, they give you a 30 cent tool. It's worth it. You see how this has like that crazy end? See how it's a star? It's not an Allen, it's a star. It's called torque bit. Okay, so that's that. We might as well just go ahead and get our air filter out of the way or our air cleaner cover. That, move that over. Look at that air cleaner. Definitely time to change that air cleaner. Definitely time. Um, we got this off so we can get this, pull this off now. Somehow at some point it's going to come off. Thank you. That's your cover. This right here, my friends, is your valve cover. Your valve cover is right there, right on top, and the valves are right on top. Really super simple. What I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go ahead and I want to spray this down with a little carbon choke cleaner just, just to get some of the loose stuff off. Throttle body cleaner. All right, how's that look? Does that look a little bit better? So now we have a little bit of a cleaning, a cleaner surface to work with. Um, I cleaned all around the valve cover, so that's all clean now. So we'll go ahead and get this out of the way. That's your spark, your spark plug cover. Let me get it right. That's your, your spark plug boot. Spark plug. I'm going to leave the old spark plug in for right now because when I take this apart, I don't want any of the valve cover gasket that might break off to fall into the cylinder. So leave your old spark plug in nice and tight. The last thing you do is change your spark plug so that way you don't accidentally get any crap in there. Okay. Um, so the next thing is brake torque on the top of your valve cover. We just did the Honda mower yesterday. We did the valve clearance and that was very interesting. Something I was not used to. I've never seen it. Um, with like an external plastic cam. Really crazy, never seen that before. Um, but we went ahead and we did that on the GVC 190. So got a little bit of schlep on that. Make sure you clean that up. If you're in a rush, if you're just watching this video because you're in a rush, I don't rush. Uh, I like to explain things thoroughly I assume that my viewers are new people um, that are interested in side hustle business 
cutting grass. Is that the same size? A little bit longer. Um, learning how to cut grass, learn how to maintain their own equipment, try to save a little bit of money. Like I said, for 15 bucks, we're gonna adjust the valves, reseal it, new plug, new air cleaner, new fuel filter um, for 15 bucks. This thing's gonna run like a brand new machine. Uh, you know, so doing that by yourself is gonna save you. If you were to buy these parts over the counter at, a, at, the, par at the shop, you know, then they're going to charge you, what, $75 for a service hour? So you're going to pay like 100 bucks for a tune-up maybe, maybe 80 bucks For $45 in about an hour of my time, I could do all three of these um, with, with no issue. Now, of course, it's going to take me a lot longer doing video, but we're only going to video one to show you how to do it. And I'm going to go on and do the rest of mine today. Uh, but right underneath here is your valves. Gosh, this is probably going to be a butt to get off because... We haven't gotten, oh, not too bad. Haven't uh, ever taken this one apart. So there's your valve cover. And right here's your seal. We can go ahead and get the seal out of here. Now you could probably reseal it right on this and it would probably be just fine. But like I said, if you can get the new gasket, you're going to be way better off. Okay, here's your valves. This is your exhaust valve. This is your intake valve. On some machines, there's going to be a different spec for each one. On this machine and all these four mixes, there's not. So, people say, what's a four mix? A four mix is, it doesn't have a separate oil uh, sump, like a four stroke. You put oil in here and you put gas in here. All right, this is two stroke gas two cycle mix but it operates as a four stroke and the lubrication comes from the fuel and oil people have gotten kind of ignorant on my channel with me not knowing what I'm talking about when I refer to these as four mix they say there's no such thing as a four mix it's either a four stroke or a two stroke no they call these a four mix because it's a four stroke that uses two cycle mix so it's a four mix if I refer to this as a four stroke and if I tell somebody, hey, go grab the four-stroke, then they're going to be looking for the oil dipstick. You see? It's not a four-stroke. It's a four-mix. It operates exactly like a four-stroke engine. Valves, four-strokes, but the oil lubricates by way of the two-stroke mix. So it's very important to use good lubrication, good oil in here. All right, so the first thing that we need to do before we... Um, we make any adjustments is we need to find a top dead center where both of these valves, both of these rocker arms are loose. See that arrow on the flywheel right there? I'm going to touch it with the tool. I'll put the light back on it. Right there. That's where you're looking. See that arrow? That arrow straight up and down is top dead center for your cylinder, for your piston. When your piston's top dead center, as I explained on the Honda mower, then these will be loose if you're on the right stroke. If you're not on the right stroke, they won't be loose. And they're not loose. So we're on the wrong stroke. So see how right now the exhaust valve's immediately moving? That means we're we're not on we're on it just fired, it's up, and now the valve's going to open and it's going to let the exhaust out as the piston's coming back, back up. It fired, piston shot down, spun the crank. Now as the piston comes back up, the exhaust valve opens and lets the exhaust out. And so that's what's happening right now. So there that goes. And we have to flip this. One more time. It's a little wonky to do. And here we go. Arrows back at the top. And as I do this, the valves are not moving. Hear that? I got play. 
I'm sorry if that was a little bit painful, uh, but the, the purpose is this is what you're going to find. This is this, I'm showing you exactly what you're going to find when you go home uh, or when you are home. Uh, when you go to your shop or garage or whatever or your lawn trailer and you want to do this, you're going to need to know what is top dead center and what is not top dead center and what to look for. And that's what I'm showing you. So that arrow that was on the flywheel that I was spinning, when it's straight up and down, you're going to have play here. If you don't have play here, then that means you're on the wrong stroke. Remember, it's a four stroke. So that piston goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down. All right. You are on the wrong stroke. Bring it around one more time. Both of these rocker arms are up and not like this, not like this. They'll never be like this, but they're, they're both up. So you're on the compression stroke. So you've already seen the intake go like this and like this, and then you see the exhaust go like this and like this, and now you're on your compression stroke. The intake filled it with fuel, whatever, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about. Intake opens, fuel and air mix goes into the cylinder, then the piston comes up, the intake closes, compression is built, spark ignites, piston flies down, piston comes back up, exhaust opens, exhaust poops out the muffler, and then piston goes down, and exhaust closes, piston comes up, builds all that compression, boom, top dead center. That's where we're at right now, okay? This is where you're gonna find your play. It's right here in the flywheel. There's no movement right here. These are not moving. As I wiggle that flywheel back and forth just a little bit, there's no movement at all. And I'm moving it this much. If you're on the wrong stroke, and I'm, and I'm beating this up because it's very important. If you're on the wrong stroke, when you're moving it like this, you're gonna see one of these valves will have tension and you're going to see one of these valves dancing just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. You're on the wrong stroke. You don't want to adjust it there. You can, if you want to get technical, you can adjust the one that's loose and then move the flywheel and adjust the next one that's loose. You can do that. Save that crap for the pros, all right? You can't be wrong if you find top dead center. Regardless if somebody says you don't have to, you just might as well. You can't go wrong. So just do it that way until you're a pro. All right, because if you screw this up, you screw up your machine. You're going to run like crap. So that's the whole purpose of adjusting the valves on these four mixes is because it's running like crap. It doesn't want to start. It doesn't want to shut off. It hiccups. It burps. It's farting out the carburetor. It's farting out the exhaust. It's loss of power. Um, just not running right. Besides the obvious air cleaner, fuel filter, spark plug, um, these valves, if they're not right, then they're not letting the right air fuel go into the cylinder or the exhaust is hanging open a little bit on the compression stroke and you're losing compression, you're losing power. So, so I'm beating it up, but it's very important. Now that you have it in this position and you know you got them both loose and they're both at top dead center, this is where you check it with the fuel gauge. Okay. I took this apart because I want you guys to see something. This is really important because you might, like you notice this is grooved here, okay? If you look at the rocker arm where it meets the valve, if you try to go in from the side, you can't. All right, so you have to measure your gap from the front. You see this? See how this is right here? So that's why this is notched like that. So if you're going to use a feeler gauge, you're going to have to cut your feeler gauge sort of to a sliver, maybe an eighth of an inch. Just cut an eighth of an inch off of a feeler gauge, a strip, and that's what you're looking for. And the valve would be hitting right here. So when you put this back on right here, the valve's right there. See where the valve is, the top of the valve? And you have your push rod right there and your rocker. I'll take your rockers all the way out guys okay I'm just did that as a service just to show you guys 
so you can drop this rocker down out of its groove and you'll have a problem or I'm sorry the push rod out of the groove and you'll have a problem now take that keeper whatever it's called put that there here's your nut 5 16 maybe a little bit more all right now back to where we were right in from the front check your gap and that's loose there's not really much drag there so what we're going to do is tighten this up about an eighth of a turn at a time oh that's too tight so I'll come back just a little and there's a little drag There's a little drag. Now, a little tighter. There we go. I like that. I like how that feels right there. That feels good. Now, what I want to do, because I took this off, and I took the push rod out, is I'm going to go ahead and check the exhaust one for you guys. But I am going to turn the motor over and make sure everything's lined up properly. And I'm going to check it one more time because everything can change. So we're still at top dead center. And now I'm going to check the exhaust. And the exhaust goes in. Wait, I'm too high. The exhaust is loose as hell too. Um, so we're going to snug this up a tick. A little bit more that was an eighth might have been a quarter turn and that's too tight come back just a little and I like that I like how that feels right there that feels good that feels good all right, I want to spin it over. It's off. Spark plug boots out of the way. I'm just going to turn it over. Make sure everything's moving right. Looks like it is. I'll come back here and find my arrow. There's the arrow right there. All right, now we're good. Loose, loose. Wiggle, wiggle, nothing's moving. Check them again. Because I took the, you know, I took that apart. So let's just make sure, one more time. And what we're gonna do, right in from the front. You guys see it, right? You see how this one's kind of on an angle this way and this one's on an angle this way so you come in right alongside the spark plug and go for it yep that's good there's some decent drag there but not much and then this one yeah that's good again decent drag but not much that's perfect. That's exactly how to do it. Okay, now look things over, make sure everything's all right. No loose parts, didn't leave any tools, no silly stuff. Gasket's good, gasket's cleaned off, it came off in one piece. You can go ahead, set your gasket on there. There is no up or down, just put it on, follow the form. And you got this right here little notch right here for your spark plug there's a little washer right here on the top don't lose that drop this on 
find the bolt right here and torque this down to good and tight I have a calibrated wrist are you ready hang on Lean on it, lean on it, lean on it, lean on it. There you go. Did you hear that? Did you hear it torque? It's torqued. That's it. Um, now, spark plug. We got it all back together. We're safe. We can take the spark plug out. Plug's not in bad shape. Ethanol free gas. Make sure you got your gap. There's a spec on these. I never check them. I don't worry about it. I don't think I have ever, ever checked the gap on a spark plug. <laughs> I know you're supposed to, but I mean, as long as it's open. I've never, I don't know, I just, probably not the right thing to do. New plug. Uh, so that's that. Now, the next thing I would recommend for you guys is if you haven't already, go ahead and take your screen, your exhaust screen out. That's right here. There's a little screwdriver right there little Phillips head I believe it is maybe it's a flat tip it will not work with this torque bit it's too big it's a smaller size torque bit just take that screw out and then and I'll show you later on that one and there's a screen you pull that exhaust screen out it's called spark arrester put the screw back in if you want throw the spark arrester out or you can clean it with the wire brush and put it back in but mechanics just throw it out at the shop they throw that crap out. So I'm going to change the fuel filter now that's in there. All right. Basically, that's all it is. And the line just popped over the barb. The hard part, though, is getting it out sometimes. Um, you can flip it over, but again, be careful for, you know, gas that you might have in it. I drained it. That doesn't mean it's, it's bone dry in there. So be really careful about what you do. Um, you could take a hook, puncture the old, and just bring it up like this. You don't have a lot of room to work with putting a new fuel filter on. So when you pull this off, if you lose your fuel line, if it falls in there, you're shit out of luck. You're going to be fishing for this little stupid rubber hose that's in there now and there's no weight to bring it out. So when you get it to this point, use your finger, hold it up against the fuel cap, the fuel, you know, opening there. Take your new one and push it on. It is that simple. That's it. That's how you change your fuel filter. It's that simple. That makes a huge difference. Okay. Next is air cleaner. We fuel it up with some good clean two cycle, ethanol free, and we'll fire this bad boy up.
don't think this thing's ever had that good a throttle response. Holy crap. One more thing for the weed eater. There is this head right here. They don't put a Zerk, a, a, a Zerk fitting. Is it Zerk? Is that what it's called? The grease fitting right here? They don't put one of them there. They have this. They have this. Thirteen. Crack this open. Okay, grease. Steel makes a grease and the thread pattern lines up. Take this and squeeze this in. Thread it in. Now, give it some grease. Squirt some grease in there. Spin it around. An experienced stick man, <laughs> an experienced weed eater guy will hear the weed eater when it's low on grease. You'll hear a tune. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but there'll be a like a high pitch whining. You'll hear it, and you learn that over with experience. Much like the vibration you feel when the weed eater head is getting low on line and you need to reline your head, refill the cartridge with new line, you'll feel a vibration and, you're, and you'll know. You'll know. Same with this. So squeeze some in there. Unscrew it. Tap it. Too easy. It's too easy, right guys? Here's your bolt. You see the new grease is in there. Tighten that back up. Snug it up. Nice and snug. And that's it, man. You're done. This machine is now ready for 2019. Never had that much throttle response. Done. Tell me about the whistle.